Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. Happy Independence Day, everybody! Let's celebrate by reviewing Independence Day! Ah! God, I hate this movie. I hate it so much. And yet, I always find out that I'm part of a small minority on this. I mean, granted, it was a critical flop, and when this movie first came out, I was excited to see shit blow up. But after you get past the explosions, there is nothing creative or original about this movie. It's just human stereotypes trying to fight off alien stereotypes. Nothing more. But so many people keep telling me, Oh, it's a popcorn movie! Can't you just have fun? Well, let me tell you something. A water slide is fun. All the slipping and sliding, it's just great. But if someone took you off the water slide, shook you, gave you a noogie, and then spat in your face and put you back on the water slide, you'd be like... That wasn't fun. That was weird and annoying. And that's this movie! So, let's celebrate Independence Day with Independence Day. So we start off with a bright flash as we see something hovering over the moon. Boy, this is like the opening shot from that other sci-fi movie. What was it called again? Oh yeah, Suburban Commando. Another bright flash appears as we cut to the Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute, who are just now noticing that the spaceship is approaching Earth. I guess it was just hiding behind the moon the whole time. Cut to another stinking flash as we're suddenly in Washington, where we see our president, played by Bill Pullman, Lone Star, who is not happy about slipping poles. That's the problem. They elected a warrior and they got a wimp. Oh, it's the Obama administration. But you know... <laughs> Hello. Yes. Could you say that again? Cut to a God damn it! Will you knock it off with those bright flashes? Your movie isn't a fucking magic show. Watch everybody as I magically switch locations. Ooh, look at me, different location. Ooh. Here we see two people playing chess, and yeah, there's really no point in prolonging this anymore. Cast, step forward and state your stereotype. I'm Judge Hirsch, I'm the Jewish stereotype. I'm Robert Lagaya, I'm the gruff military stereotype. I'm Randy Quaid, and I'm the redneck stereotype. I'm Brent Spiner, and I'm the geeky stereotype. I'm that guy from Mrs. Doubtfire, and I'm the gay stereotype. I'm Harry Connick Jr., and I'm the annoying best friend stereotype. I am Jeff Goldblum, and I am in and of myself a, a stereotype. So, with a cast like that, how can't an alien race be tempted to wipe out all that Earth has to offer, as they send out their giant mechanical sand dollars to cover the globe? I swear to God, if I see another flash, I'm gonna shove this movie up Roland Emmerich's dick hole. I don't want to add to a public hysteria that's gonna cost lives. And what happens if they do become hostile? Okay, big cliche, big cliche, come on, come on, come on, big cliche, big cliche, come on, come on, come on! And God help us. Yeah! So we cut to Randy Quaid, who's a drunk redneck pilot who actually claims to have been abducted by aliens before. Russ, when they took you up in their spaceship, did they do any mm, sexual things <laughs> to you at all, you recollect? I don't need this. If I wanted to be laughed at, I'd go back to Hollywood. So the aliens arrive and place themselves conveniently over America's most famous monuments. But that doesn't stop our other main character, Will Smith, getting jiggy with it on his girlfriend, Vivica A. Fox. What you been doing out there? Shooting aliens. Oh, you shooting aliens, right? Oh, you think you're tough, huh? <laughs> Must resist men in black joke. Must resist men in black joke. And I have to admit, this is the only character who doesn't suck. Not because of the writing or anything, but because it's fucking Will Smith. The king of cool, he can make anything sound awesome. He's like the most charming man alive. I don't even know what it is. There's just something about him. Bones, you like bones? But seriously, he can make anything sound good. Look at this very basic scene, and listen to how he makes it so cool. Uh-uh, come on now, you can't go. You got to call them back. I'm not gonna do this with you, Jasmine. But you said you was on leave for the fourth. Look, why are you acting like this? Why? That's why. What's wrong with her? She's crazy. He's gorgeous. I really don't think they flew 90 billion light years to come down here and start a fight. 
Look at this bit. The line is, you're not as charming as you think you are, and Will Smith just says, yes, I am. What a terrible line. Who the hell would write that? But when you listen to him say it. But you are not as charming as you think you are, sir. Yes, I am. But more important things are going on, like how our government, with all their scientific technology, discovers that the alien ships are using our own satellites against us, sending out a signal that will eventually run out and probably mean an attack. Oh wait, no, sorry, this was figured out by one cable repairman whose job is to make sure that your HBO is coming in clear. FBI, TV maintenance, they're both pretty similar. Ah, uh, it's like in chess. First you strategically position your pieces, then when the timing's right, you strike. They're positioning themselves all over the world, approximately six hours. The signal's gonna disappear and the countdown's gonna be over. And then what? Checkmate. Good lord, Jeff Goldblum can make just about anything over dramatic, can he? Even in a scene that is over dramatic, he makes it even more over dramatic. How is it Jeff Goldblum can turn anything into a melodrama? Ah, uh, yes, I would like to uh, return this taco uh, to you because there was uh, 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 no sauce on it. And uh, as we all know, when there is uh, no sauce on the taco, uh, you will realize that uh, it is not spicy. And uh, bah, 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 if it is not spicy, uh, well, then you all know what that means. Uh, 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 uh. Checkmate. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I gotta call my brother. I better call my housekeeper. I gotta call my lawyer. Uh, forget my lawyer. I gotta call Disney and let him know I won't be able to do Mulan 5. So Jeff Goldblum and his father head to the White House to try and warn them. Yeah, so tell me something. Are you so smart? How come you spend eight years in MIT to become a cable repairman? Yeah, does, no, all I'm saying is they got people who handle these things, David. Look at these, look at these people, look. Vultures. They take and then they go. Yeah, they're going, they're going faster than we are. Look at this, well, we're in the fast I, lane. I can't go faster, they're cutting me off here. No one's cutting you off. Yeah, we're gonna get a ticket. You're getting in front of me, I can't go any faster. Oh, I can out you, 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 you, no, I can out you, you. So Randy Quay tries his best to get his family away from the aliens. We got his son, who's ashamed of his father, his daughter, who's a complete slut, and the third one, who's... the third one. But enough of that, we see Will Smith and his friend Harry Connick Jr. as it seems Will has been turned down again to join NASA. Man, you know I really like Jasmine. You know that, right? Man, you're never gonna get to fly the space shuttle if you marry a stripper. That's right, his fiancée's a stripper. And because of that, I guess NASA doesn't think he'll be mentally sound. You know, because the space program has produced some real examples of mental health in the past few years, haven't they? So Goldblum and his father finally get to the White House. Ugh, goddamn tea partiers. But it's okay, they have a way inside. How? Well, it turns out Goldblum happens to have an ex-wife who works for the White House. Isn't that a happy little coincidence? I would never believe in my lifetime that I would be in the White House. Look at this. If I knew I was going to meet the president, I would have worn a tie. I mean, look at me. I, I look like a Shlemiel. Shlemiel! Goyim! Bar Mitzvah! Did I mention I'm Jewish?! So he convinces the president that they have less than a half hour until Boomsville. So they get the president out as one helicopter tries to make contact with the ship. Welcome wagon has commenced. You may fire when ready. Meanwhile, the president's wife, who's in another location, is told to evacuate as well. And our prayers go out to the wives and children of those brave pilots. Indeed, God help us all. Really? The newscaster just said, God help us all? Isn't that the equivalent of saying, A hurricane was spotted on the eastern coast. Panic! 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 We're all gonna die! <laughs> so the ships finally start to open up as Goldblum sees the clock has ticked its last seconds. Oh, hey, uh, push that button over there, would you? Oh, oh yeah. Oh. So the Earth is on fire as Will Smith's fiance rushes for cover. Ah! Yeah, hide there. The explosion will never think to look for you there. Ah! Yes, what about Puma? Dude, lady, you have a kid with you. Fuck the dog and just close the damn door. Luckily, the explosion's too polite to enter through an open door, so I guess they'll be safe after all. 
So July 3rd hits as we look over the aftermath the aliens have left behind. You maniac! You blow it up! That's the advantage of being a fighter pilot. In the Gulf War, we knew what we had to do. Aw, oh, hey, look at the bright side. Could have been an oil spill. So Vivica and her kid are shocked to find that duck and cover shit really works as they grab a truck and start looking for survivors. Yeah, but... Did Boomer make it okay? Boomer will live. <laughs> Meanwhile, Will Smith and the rest of the fighter pilots head up to kick some alien ass. Bring that bad boy on, Cap! You lose? Yes, sir. You got your victory dance? Well, I got it right here! Yeah! Oh, wow, you are so dead. As the good reverend would say, why we on this particular mission, we'll never know. But I do know here today that the Black Knights will emerge victorious once again. Amen, man. Amen, reverend. Hey, you know what else I love? Living. I love living. I hope to do a lot of living while I'm still alive. I'm just so lively. Wouldn't it be a great tragic irony if I was to not be living? Wouldn't that be the most dramatic contrast that only a B-movie that somehow got a bajillion dollar budget would put together? God, I love being alive. Alive! Lock and load. But unfortunately, the ship has some sort of refreshing mint shield as the alien pilots come out to kill the fighters. I got you covered, Big Daddy. Damn, they got shields too. Let's get low, let's get fast. I got you, Big Daddy. Let's get them. Do a barrel roll. Oh, and here's a big shocker. Are you ready for this? This is like a big shocker. Holy smokes, you're not going to believe this. I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, are you ready? Are you ready? Sit down. It's really incredible. Are you ready? The best friend dies! Jimmy! Oh my god! They killed Jimmy! You bastards! 